sexuality educator. Before we get into this week's video, I have an announcement. Some of you may know I have a free guide available for you to download called Over 100 Questions for You to Ask Your Kids About Sexuality. Something I often tell my clients and people in my workshops is that if there is an aspect of sexuality that you want to discuss with your kids but you're not sure how to bring it up, something you can do is you can try asking them a question about it and then see where the conversation goes. As you probably guessed, my guide has over a hundred of these conversation starting questions and they're divided into questions for preschoolers, questions for children, questions for tweens, and then questions for teenagers. Every day in April, I'm going to take one of those questions, I'm going to do a little video about it, you know, give you some tips on how you might answer it, share some information and resources. I'm really excited about doing this and I'm going to try and make it fun and informative for you. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then uh, go down below, click the subscribe button, and then also click the little bell so that you will get a notification every time there's a new video. And then if you don't have the guide yet, I'm going to leave a link for that in the description box. So you can go ahead and click that and download the guide for free so you can follow along at home. It has the questions and it also has lots of really great information about, you know, why it's important to have these discussions with kids uh, and a bunch of tips and tricks and information in addition to the questions. So go ahead and do that. Okay, on with the video. So if you uh, are a regular watcher, then you know for the past few videos we've been talking about teen pregnancy. And uh, if you're new, welcome! For the past few weeks, we've been talking about teen pregnancy. A couple weeks ago, we talked about how we as parents and caregivers can support a teen who might be dealing with a pregnancy. And then last week, we talked about pregnancy options. And so this week, I want to talk to you about what we can do as parents and caregivers to help our youth avoid an unintended pregnancy in the first place. So we can help our teens, but there isn't anything we can do to guarantee that they won't experience an unintended pregnancy. We can definitely encourage certain choices around sexual activity and sexual health, but ultimately we can't make those decisions for them. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today are strategies that have been shown through research to have a correlation or some connection to lower teen pregnancy rates. And the first one is comprehensive sex education. That's basically my jam, you know, it's what I do on this channel, it's what I do in my job. It's sex education that covers several facets of sexuality and it is also education that strives to be medically accurate and fact-based. I'm gonna leave a link to a couple of reports down in the description box and they talk about the effects of comprehensive sex education on teen pregnancy rates. I also encourage you to go and Google or look up some of this for yourself because it's really interesting research. But generally speaking, what's been found is that youth who have access to comprehensive sex education um, at an early age, well before they become sexually active, A, tend to delay their first partnered sexual experiences, B, they are more likely to use contraception and practice safer sex, and C, they are more likely to use contraception and practice safer sex consistently. What's also interesting to note is that talking about safer sex in early adolescence hasn't been shown to encourage early partnered sexual activity, and it hasn't been shown to increase the number of sexual partners that youth have when they eventually do become sexually active with partners. Most provinces and territories in Canada do offer a comprehensive sex education program in public schools. That having been said, I think that family sex education at home is equally important. As a family, we have the added benefit of knowing our children and we can also, you know, infuse our sex education with our personal values and we can tailor the lessons around sexuality to, you know, our kids' maturity level and their interests and our lifestyle. Uh, in the United States, sex education is less consistent. It's not available everywhere. Now, in some places, they have fantastic comprehensive sex education and other places, not so much. There are also some U.S. states where there are no laws or regulations that require that the sex ed that is given be accurate or fact-based in any way. 
But again, when you look at research, a majority of US parents do support comprehensive sex ed. So this is where if you are living in the States and you do have, you know, tweens or teenagers, you as a family can really take control of the sex education that your kids get at home. Something else we can do as adults to help our teens avoid unintended pregnancy is provide access to contraception or birth control. By the age of 17, a majority of youth, about two-thirds, have had some type of partnered sex. For those youth who are having the baby-making type of partnered sex, knowing what birth control is, is the first step. The next and very critical step is actually getting that birth control. Getting access to birth control or contraception can sometimes be harder for teens than it is for us as adults. Finding a doctor or a medical professional might be a little bit trickier. Um, transportation to get to a doctor or a clinic might be a little bit harder. Um, paying for it may be more challenging when you're a teenager. And just having it on hand may be a little bit more of a challenge for teens. As adults, we might be able to help them overcome some of these challenges. You know, we might be able to drive them or give them cab fare or transportation fare so they can get to a clinic. We may be able to help our kids pay for contraception. You know, we may have medical insurance that might give them partial coverage or we can, you know, give them a little money to help them pay for it. I know once I became sexually active, my parents helped me pay for my birth control pills and that was really helpful because they would have been very expensive otherwise. Certain types of contraception can be bought ahead of time and kept at home so teens have easy access. You know, something like condoms or the emergency contraceptive pill can actually be purchased ahead of time and kept in the house. But overall, the easier it is for teens to get contraception, the more likely they're going to be to use it. And speaking of using it, this is a part of safer sex education that sometimes gets missed or at least glossed over, which is making sure teens actually know how to use their contraception. So that means making sure that they have clear instructions and also giving them some time and some space to actually practice using it. With something like hormonal birth control pill, practicing is a little bit challenging because that's not really a thing. Like you're either using them or you're not. But you can make sure that your teen has access to really clear instructions that for example, you know, if they're taking the pill, they know that they need to take the pill around the same time every day. That, you know, they know when they need to switch out their patch or their ring. But with barrier methods of contraception, so internal and external condoms, youth actually can get them and practice using them before they become sexually active with their partner. It's great if youth can try out several different brands and different sizes so that they can find the condoms that fit well and feel good. It's great if, you know, they have even a couple of dozen on hand before they start having sex with someone so they can practice, you know, taking them out of the package and rolling them on and taking them off. Condoms can do a great job at reducing the risk of unintended pregnancy when they're used correctly but it can take a little bit of practice to get your condom game down. And first time sex is usually not the ideal time to be figuring out how to use one for the first time in your life. In fact, most types of hormonal or barrier contraceptives are over 95% effective with perfect use. And as they say, practice makes perfect. So to recap, we can help reduce our teen's risk of unintended pregnancy by teaching them about birth control, making sure they have access to birth control, and finally, making sure they know how to use their birth control. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you have a great day and I will see you April 1st. Bye.